Hello, welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how I made this box with a little elephant bug um, and its environment as decoration for the lid. If this is the first video of mine you've ever seen, please do consider going to my channel and having a look at the other videos that I have. And if you like my content, subscribe to my channel. I have a lot more content planned in the future. But let's get to the project. I started out with some uh, corrugated cardboard and I am planning to make an octagonal box so I'm just cutting out uh, these rectangle pieces first. I'm doubling up on the cardboard as I want something quite sturdy. Two layers of corrugated cardboard aligned to go the opposite way uh, usually make for a sturdy base. And here I am just measuring and cutting off the corners to create that octagonal shape. And I'm going to need two of these pieces. One of them necessarily needs to be a little bit larger than the other so that the lid can fit over the base. And I do the same for the sides. I just cut them out of uh, corrugated cardboard um, sort of measuring and marking with a pencil and adjusting. My measurements weren't perfect, but I also used a little bit of uh, trial and error when um, I was cutting out the smaller pieces to make sure that every everything fits nice. Uh, so I have my two big pieces and you can see how I plan to make the sides come together and I'm just going to be using um, straight up hot glue to assemble the sides of the box. I attach the larger pieces of the wall first and then I fill in the gaps with the little ones. I cut these just a little bit oversized so that they overlap with the diagonal and fill in the gaps and I assembled the lid exactly the same way and as you can see I'm just trimming up with a sharp blade that little bit of access from the overlap. Um, I wanted to reinforce the lid um, with another layer of cardboard and I'm just measuring to fit uh, pieces inside and also to make the rim of the lid a bit thicker so that it fits better um, with the bottom part of the box so that it's kind of like a pressure fit and it's not loose. And I'm just uh, using hot glue to assemble everything, as you can see. And with the help of uh, the extra layer of cardboard, the box fits perfectly together. Now to reinforce the cardboard, I'm going to be using a little bit of um, PVA glue uh, diluted in water and some uh, scrap uh, pages. Just a layer of it is going to hide all of those corrugated edges and uh, reinforce the cardboard itself. Um, so this way it will be uh, long-lasting and not fall apart at the seams. Hot glue is really good for uh, holding things together in an instant, but is not as permanent and archival as regular PVA glue is. 
So having this layer of protection um, is just the best way to make something last. And I just covered the entire two pieces inside and out, uh, making sure that I pay special attention to the corners to be reinforced. Uh, you could also do this with uh, flour and water. Um, that would also last for a long time, but because I have PVA glue on hand, is just my go-to. After that a layer of paper has dried, I'm actually applying a generous coat of PVA glue to further seal the box. So I had this small little elephant in my stash for quite a while. I'm not sure where it came from. I think it's uh, plastic or wood painted and it had a lot of um, flashing and seam um, access so I'm just using a sharp uh, craft knife to um, carve off those extra bits and my idea was to make a tiny blanket for this tiny elephant um, out of a piece of embroidered cloth um, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm just using a small piece of paper to make a template for the shape to fit uh, on the back of the elephant, going around the shape of its ears and back. So when I'm happy with the template, I'm just tracing it over a piece of a water soluble a sticky stabilizer and I'm also going to draw the pattern that I want to embroider on top of this piece and I'm just using a pan and uh, freehanding it. Uh, I'm cutting the piece off and I'm going to be attaching it to a piece of a yellow felt and I'm going to put this into an embroidery hoop, tighten the fabric and get on with embroidering. So I'm just getting into my stash of embroidery threads and picking out some colors and I'm just going to start working on the little flowers. I am first using a daisy stitch um, to embroider the petals of the flowers and I'm using a sort of golden orange thread for some of the flowers. I'm just patiently taking my time making small neat little stitches uh, going around the flower. do the same for two other flowers using the same thread and I'm using a different more reddish color to embroider the other flower elements on this little piece. Uh, for the middle one I'm just using a small satin stitch and I go back to using a daisy stitch for the other two flowers on the edge. I picked out a green color to do some of the leaves and I'm using a fishbone stitch. Um, and then I picked a lighter green and using a combination of stem stitch and fishbone stitch to finish um, the green leaves. And I'm also going to be using the same uh, light green 
to make French knots in the middle of the flowers and to add some dots around the perimeter of the piece. Uh, when that is done, I take it off the embroidery hoop and cut it out neatly with my scissors. The stabilizer actually helps with um, the felt not fraying on the edges um, because of its stickiness. And I'm going to be using a dark green embroidery thread to go around the edge with the leather stitch to basically reinforce the edge and make sure that everything stays in place and it won't fray. It's also a really nice decorative element to go on the edges of things, in my opinion. When that is done, I just take a little bit of clean water and soak the piece um, and start rubbing with my fingers, uh, trying to wash off uh, the sticky stabilizer. And when that is gone, uh, the yellow of the felt just shows up clear. And I actually mold this piece to dry on the back of the little elephant so that it um, gets that shape. Um, <laughs> the elephant with the blanket on its back actually looks a little bit like a beetle. Like uh, an elephant that has a carapace instead of an elephant that has a blanket on its back. And not wanting to scrap all my hard work, I've actually just leaned into what happened and decided to transform the little elephant into an elephant beetle or elibug, if you will. So I've decided to give it some antenna and there we go, we have a little tiny beetle elephant. Um, I'm turning my attention back to the box after it dried for about a day and I want to add some texture paste. Um, well, in a way this is another um, layer of reinforcement but also it gives um, interesting texture and it's going to hide all of the seams from the layers of paper from before. And I'm adding a fairly thick layer to the outside of the box. Uh, while that dries, I turn my attention to the tiny elephant and it's time to paint it. I actually attached it to uh, the lid of a marker with a glue dot so that I can manipulate it and access it better. And I just mixed um, gray color um, and just painting all over the elephant. I think I gave it a couple of coats of gray. Um, and when it dried, I added some yellow dry brushing and uh, actually painted the antenna very yellow. Uh, followed by a coat of gold because I, as I said, I am leaning into the beetle aesthetic and I just thought a little bit of shiny would do it justice. But it was too bright, so I made a wash of um, black acrylic paint and shellac ink uh, to go all over the elephant to bring it back to sort of um, a more elephant color. Um, when the first layer of um, tile grout has dried on the box, I made a much thinner mixture for the inside because I was very weary of adding more uh, thickness uh, to the box um, so that the lid wouldn't fit. So I just made a thinner mixture to go on the inside and I'm just using my finger to smooth it out as I go. 
there is my little elephant after it's been painted and I realized that I wanted to repeat the pattern of um, the embroidered blanket on its back somewhere on the box. So I came up with the idea of uh, taking pictures of the little blanket and printing them out um, on my computer and um, using them as sort of a pattern paper and that's exactly what I did I cut out uh, little circles of uh, the pattern and I'm using these um, glass rocks and I stuck them on and they have this really nice effect of magnifying the design underneath and also kind of like looking like dewdrops so that's exactly what I did and uh, here I am just cutting them out one by one um, at the time I wasn't sure exactly where the project was going and I would made way more uh, little um, glass domes that I needed in the end uh, but I'm sure I'll find some sort of use for all of these in a different project when I was done with that I just painted the box a plain black color and uh, then painting the interior uh, m with a matte dark green and sort of going around the edges and lightly dry brushing the outside too but on the outside I'm actually using a sort of olive green to uh, paint over um, not not in like a perfect way I am embracing the streaky nature of my um, sponge applicator and picking out the textures in the box from the tile grout mixture and then finally um, adding a layer of gold paint basically just rubbing uh, with my finger and going all over the outside of uh, the box and the lid to make it this sort of um, shiny green so I decided that I want to make a little uh, environment like a nature environment for my little Ellie bug and I picked out some plastic plants um, and some fake moss rocks from my stash and first I'm going over the plastic bits and cutting off the flashing and I'm going to cut these uh, moss uh, rocks uh, in half um, because I don't need them that tall and this way I'm actually doubling the amount of uh, surface that I can cover with them. These are actually aquarium decorations so they're polystyrene inside and I'm sort of getting a better idea now of exactly how I want to decorate the lid. I'm going about the business of painting the little plastic leaves that I have. Uh, these silk leaves actually had a very nice um, texture and color on them. I just needed to paint the edges. Uh, these other plastic ones though were quite shiny so they needed a couple of coats um, to make them look a little bit more realistic and organic. I'm especially fond of these umbrella looking plants and I think uh, they ended up looking really good in the final project. Uh, those long leaves I didn't actually end up using in the project so there's no point in me showing you how I painted them. But I am uh, coloring these mounds of moss a little bit, toning down that very stark bright green that they originally came in. I'm using a variety of colors including a little bit of yellow now to dry brush over um, 
the plastic leaves to just uh, bring some more color variety and bring them to life. When everything has been painted, I'm moving on to the assembly part and this is always the best uh, where I get to make decisions and uh, put everything together. It's very satisfying and I'm just going to be using hot glue to attach everything. So my little Ellie bug goes in the middle and his environment is just going to be built around him and I'm just carefully attaching everything with hot glue and I'm using some of these uh, dewdrops, giant dewdrops or I don't know what they're really supposed to be I just like to think about them as giant dewdrops um, at first I thought I would decorate the box, the rim of the box all around with them but they were too large and it, it would have ruined the octagonal shape of the box so I only ended up using like five of them. Um, I'm very fond of these umbrella uh, plants. I think they're really cute and unique and I just like the way um, putting them into a cluster almost looks like a nice little shady place for the alley bug to um, hide. I'm just making decisions about um, the best uh, strategical position to put the plastic plants in to hide the hot glue and embed everything in a way that looks organic and seamless. And I'm also using these um, silk leaves uh, sort of in the similar fashion of um, filling in gaps and hiding seams where I don't know maybe a little bit of the polystyrene might be showing. As I said, I have a lot of these dewdrops left over, so I just temporarily put them away in um, the roll paper jar I recently made in another video. I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to see how I made that. There it is. The lid of my little box is finished and the Ellie bug has a home. I'm attaching a bunch of uh, photos at the end now so you can have a better look and uh, a close-up view of the details. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. Do let me know what you think about it in the comments. I would love to hear some feedback. Um, if you enjoy the sort of content that I make, please do consider going to my channel or click on one of the suggested videos at the end uh, to see some more. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you have a nice day. Bye.